Magandang araw, teammates. Once again, I'm Mr. Dante S. Salazar of DSS Review Center. And today, I will be sharing with you how I do item analysis. Okay, so that's our focus uh, for today. Okay, so item analysis is a process which examines students' responses to individual test items or questions in order to assess the quality of those items and of the test as a whole. Okay, so that its priority is to improve the test item and the test as a whole. Item analysis is especially valuable in improving items which will be used again in later tests. But it can also be used to eliminate ambiguous or misleading items in a single test administration. Okay, so in addition, item analysis is valuable for increasing instructor skills in test construction and identifying specific areas of course or content which need greater emphasis or clarity. Okay, so these are the major purpose of uh, item analysis. First is make your test standardized and then provide necessary intervention and improve assessment and instruction. Okay, so the group of students taking the test is divided into three groups, upper, middle, and lower groups, based on students' scores on the test. Okay, so how are we going to divide? It has been long accepted that optimal item discrimination is obtained when the upper and lower groups each contain 27% of the total group. What does it mean? Okay, so I'll make it very specific. Consider you have 40 students. Let's say our focus is a particular class. Okay, you have 40 students, okay, and you want to apply item analysis uh, in your summative test. Okay, so how are you going to do that? You may get 27%, okay, or 11 11 students or 11 scores out of 40, okay, the lowest, okay, the lowest 11 scores, you may use that as your lower group. And then another 27% of the upper group. So definitely you have to arrange the scores from lowest to highest, okay, so that you can get the top 11 and the bottom 11, okay. And then the middle score, the uh, 46% uh, middle score, you may or you may not consider that anymore, okay? So in, in, in case of difficulty index, you may include the middle score. But based on my observation, when I combine all in terms of difficulty index, the middle score may not be that significant. Okay, but you may also try it on your own. You may also try to describe or compare the results later. Okay, but for our practice today, okay, because I'll be introducing a, a specific program, I'll be considering the lower and upper group only. Okay, so now, this division is essential if information is to be provided concerning the operations of distractors, okay, or incorrect options, and to compute an easily interpretable index of discrimination. Ideally, the students who answer the item incorrectly should select each incorrect response in roughly equal proportions rather than concentrating on a single incorrect option. Medyo technical yung mga terms. Ano? But don't you worry, I will simplify this later. Okay, so now let's start with index of difficulty or difficulty index. 
again, the proportion of the students who got the correct answer over the total number of students. Okay, and this is the range for difficulty index. Okay, so if the percentage is from 0 to 0.1, that means it's very difficult. From 0.11 to 0.25 is considered difficult. From 0.26 to 0.75 is optimum difficulty, or we simply consider that as average. Other 70, 0.76 to 0.9 is easy, and 0.91 to 1 is very easy. Actually, this is considered 1 is 100%. 0 is 0%, okay? These are 90%, 75%, 25%. That's how we interpret it, okay? Now, let's have a specific example. Consider this is the result of your first uh, five items, okay? So, item one to five. So, high group, let's say there are 11, 11 members or 11 scores for the high group and 11 scores for the low group. Okay, and the total is 22. Now, let's say for the high group, out of 11, 11 got the correct answer. And for the low group, out of 10, 10 got, or out of 11, 10 got the correct answers. Okay, now the question is 11 plus 10 is 21. 21 divided by 22 is 0.95. That is your index. Okay. For item number two, these are the scores, and the index are here, 0 0.86, 0 0.56, 0 0.23, 0 0.05. So same formula lang po yan. Total number of correct answers divided by the total number of scores. Now, what is your interpretation? For item number one, 0.95 is actually between 0.91 and 1. That means that item is very easy. Okay? Next, item number 2, 0.86. That is between 0.76 and 0.9. So it is easy. 0.59 is between 0.26 and 0.75. Then it is optimum difficulty or average. 0.23 is between 0.11 up to 0.25, and that is difficult, while 0.05 is actually between 0 to 0.1, that is very difficult. Okay, the question now is, what is your decision? Okay, what is your decision? Okay, we may reject the very easy and very difficult items, but you also, uh, take a look at it before you reject it. You reflect. What are the reasons why that item is considered very easy? Okay? Baka na, it may be possible that you are using the same example and that that example is also appeared in the test. That's why it's very easy. Because the students already memorizing the answers. They know already that is your example, that is your everyday drills, and then that's also part of your test. So that makes it very easy. While very difficult may really be, if it's possible that it may be difficult. However, it is also possible that that particular item is not yet part of your discussion. So you also check, you also check, okay? If it is not yet part of a discussion, you may not reject that totally, okay? All right, so but this is our initial decision. Now let's continue. Okay, let's proceed to index of discrimination, wherein it is the difference between the proportion of the upper group who got an item right and the proportion of the lower group who got the item right. So this is where the upper and the lower group is very crucial. Okay. That's why we get the upper 27% and the lower 27%. And this is our discrimination index. So point, our negative 1 to 0.19 is low, 0.2 to 0.39 is moderate, 
and point four two two one is high. Okay, so that means if your discrimination index is between point one to point nineteen, it is low, and then point two to point thirty nine is moderate. Point four to one is high. All right. Okay. So now let's have an example. So consider that item one and five is already rejected because they did not pass the difficulty uh, index. Okay. Now you have three remaining items to be assessed. All right. So high group percentage is one hundred percent or one, and then low group is point seventy three. When you subtract high group minus low group, you get 0.27, okay? While the other one, this is 0.82 minus 0.36, you get 0 0.45. 0 0.27 minus 0 0.18 is 0 0.09. So again, what is your interpretation? All right, so for item number four, it's 0 0.09, that is between negative 1 and point 0.19, so low, okay? While item number 3 is point 0.45, it is between point 0.2 and, uh, so it's between point 0.4 and 1, that is high, and item number 2 is point 0.27, that is between point 0.2 and point 0.39, it is moderate, okay? So with that, what is now your decision? Okay, what are the factors why these things happen? Particularly the low part, okay? Actually, in this case, we reject the discrimination index with low discrimination. How does, or what does it mean? Okay, so uh, that means that the number or the percentage of of correct answers in the high group is almost the same with the low group or even low group has higher percentage than the high group. So in that case, what is our interpretation? It is possible na confusing yung question, nalito yung mga nasa high group at nachambahan yung mga nasa low group, okay? That's how we interpret low discrimination index kasi what we expect is if a good item must be answered well by the high group and must not be answered well by the low group, okay? If that reverse na mas marami ang correct answer sa low group than the high group, that is not a good item, okay? Now, after checking the difficulty index and discrimination index, what's next? Okay, so check the options of the remaining items. These are not yet your good items. You have to check the options. Okay, in that case, items two and three, A, B, C, D. Let's say A, B, C, D. So for item number two, 20 uh, students uh, selected option A, 20 students selected option D, but none for B and C. Number three, 20 selected A, five for B, five for C, and 10 for D. The question is, what is your decision? So for item number two, you may change options B and C. That means these are not good options. Even if two is a good item, B and C are not good options. So you have to revise. You have to change options B and C, okay? While uh, item number three, okay, are very valid, or this is very valid, so we can consider that for item bank. Okay, so we may now use item number three for item banking. All right, so I'll be showing you a specific program that I use, an Excel program, so that everything that I have presented here will be done easily, okay? So that will be in, uh, in my next video. So with that, um, 
thank you so much for listening and always subscribe with my YouTube channel so that you will be updated with the videos that I will be presenting. Once again, thank you and good day.